This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Welcome back to the JMZ Online YouTube channel. Today we're showing you the process of modifying the crankshaft of the 1966 4.2 liter Jaguar engine for an aftermarket rear main seal conversion kit. I'd also recommend sticking around till the end of the video for a quick rundown on the final machine work on the bottom end of this engine. But for now, let's get to work on the crankshaft. Okay, so I've put the crank back in the crank grinder here set it up on the mains here, zeroed it in. I have it running very true with the rear main. And I'm gonna come in and grind this seal surface down to match the specs for their new replacement seal. I've already dressed my wheel, dressed the sides, dressed the radius. I gotta get out my uh, trusty pencil and check that I have proper distance here so I don't crash the wheel. I'll just go ahead and run it in without the wheel running here just to kind of check yeah we look good we have plenty of clearance okay let's see what happens sweep over so i'm just against the side and now we'll start feeding in i was farther away than i thought it was down on the seal surface. If you're new here or if you're back again but you still haven't subscribed, be sure to do so and help us reach our next goal of hitting half a million subs. You guys are what makes these videos possible. I'm real close to where I want to stop and measure. Probably don't want to go too far. Down to, where'd I write this? Here's where I wrote it. I was 3125. We're going down to 632. We're at three inch and five thousandths. So I've taken 120 off of it. So we've got uh, still almost 400 to go, 370. Before we take this crank down to that finished size, I wanna take a quick moment to tell you about our sponsor that made this video possible, Squarespace. Our shop has had a website hosted with Squarespace for over seven years, and we would recommend it to anyone who wants to have a beautiful website for their business, but has limited time and experience to design their own site. Squarespace has a built-in website builder, allowing you to choose a pre-made template that can then be easily customized to meet your specific needs. Even with no web design experience, it's straightforward and simple to build pages with text and images, or even add more complex features with a click of a button, such as a form for potential new customers to fill out. And don't worry, your site will automatically adjust to be optimized for whatever device your visitor is utilizing without any extra work on your end. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash jimsautomotive to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I think I'll just kind of keep going one turn of the wheel at a time until we get there. So what's each turn of the wheel, a hard? Uh, 80. 80? Yeah. So this should be 2.9... Um, 25? 25, yeah. And I am. Plus or minus one. I can still go one more turn like that. You gonna use the Arnold gauge at all or just... I will when I get down close. That's a pretty rough finish on there yet. It's hard to mic. Huh. Grabs the mic. Okay, I got six, not quite 90. We'll turn the water on back here. I'm gonna dress this again. It's barely touching because the stone is worn down. I guess that's probably where you're discrepancy comes yeah from. from the wheel there because I was dropping a thousandths or so each time okay I am at 649 and a half 
Yeah, 17 and a half. With being within 20 thousandths from final size, the Arnold in-process grinding gauge can be set, allowing the diameter of the crank to be measured on the fly while grinding. There's 17 and a half, and I will uh, quit before we get completely there. I'm going to set this to 17 and a half. The marks on the feed wheel can also be set for a rough indication of size, however it is far less accurate than the Arnold gauge. I'm guessing we dressed probably uh, two and a half or so off the wheel, so I'm going to reset that, guessing we have about five to go, actually a little bit more. Two point six. 35, 36. And we went 32? Yeah. So I've got four to go. Mark that over to four. As we approach the final diameter, the last feeding of the grinding stone is done with the button as opposed to the hand wheel, allowing for two tenth increment adjustments. I'm going to quit just a little bit early to allow for polishing. Looks nice. You're thinking that's right on the money. So I'm going to kind of sweep as I do that. The width of the grinding stone was just wide enough to grind part of the oil slinger away, leaving a somewhat nasty edge on the OD, which we opted to take down a little bit before calling it quits. This is kind of like the rub your belly and pat your head at the same time. It is. Same time kind of thing. Oh, and grind a crankshaft while you're at it. And as soon as you started saying that, I couldn't do it anymore. Whoops. Uh, I think we stop right there. That way they'll still have the effects of the slinger, even though they said we really don't need that in there, but they said if you have a narrow enough wheel, you can. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's as, about as good as can be expected on that. So how, how forgiving is a rear main seal size-wise usually? Very forgiving. A lot more forgiving than people think they are. I couldn't tell you the exact amount, thousands or whatever, that's forgiving, but they are very forgiving. If you got a rope seal, it's going to pack in to whatever size uh, rear of the crank is, and your, like your two-piece neoprene seals or your full-circle seals with a spring around them, especially the ones with a spring, they will give a lot. It's amazing how much they'll make up for on a worn crankshaft surface. With that being said, we've got this right to the size it's supposed to be, 2.632, right on the money. So I'll come back with a polishing belt here and take kind of the sharp edge off the amount of the oil slinger we left on there and we'll be good to go. This crankshaft was actually in surprisingly good condition when it came in the shop and actually on the rod and main journals, a quick polish was all that was needed as opposed to a full regrind. I'm thinking it looks good. We left nice radius down in the corner here. Left nice radius here. We left the oil slinger, which may not have been fully necessary on this, but uh, we were told that if you could leave it, why do so? Because a lot of people don't have a wheel narrow enough to grind without. So I think we're done. With the crankshaft modification wrapped up, we have just a few machining operations to wrap up the bottom end of this engine. Our customer provided us with a set of ARP bolts for the connecting rods, so we resized the big end of the rods by first cutting a small amount of material off the mating surfaces of the rods and caps. At this point, we realized that the connecting rods had become slightly magnetic, so we demagnetized them by passing them through the electromagnetic field created by our magnetic yoke. The new rod bolts were carefully pressed into the connecting rods, and the caps were torqued onto the rods to the provided spec from ARP. At this point, we can see that the big end housing bore is reading at three thousandths of an inch tight relative to the lower side of the diameter tolerance, which is zero on this gauge. To start, we will use the rod hone with a roughing stone to quickly remove material from the bore, bringing us to within a thousandth of our final size. We can then switch over to a finer grit finish stone and carefully hone the connecting rods until we're just within the tight side of the tolerance provided by the connecting rod bearing manufacturer. 
The pin bushings were also fit to the new piston pins before checking each rod for twist and bend. If a feeler gauge slides easily between the pin and the jig on one side but not the other, that means the twist or bend must be corrected. This is done through means of gentle persuasion, aka a little push with the straightening bar. We double checked the rod bearing clearance and found that we had around 2 thousandths clearance, which is a good spot for this build. Pistons were all weight matched, but when we went to balance the rods, we found that while they were all relatively close overall, the big ends varied by about 14 grams and the small ends varied by about 15 grams. Unfortunately, to get them closer would require removing a significant amount of material from most of the rods, but the rods have no balance pads and we could risk damaging the structural integrity of the rods by removing that much material. We were sure to inform the customer of this, allowing them to make an informed decision on whether to run them as is or look for a different set of rods. Finally, we spun the crankshaft on the balancer, as well as spinning it with a flywheel, pressure plate, and harmonic damper installed to double check the entire assembly. It turns out the damper was around 6 grams off, but after drilling a quick balance hole in the proper location, the overall balance of the assembly was brought to within 1.5 grams. With that wrapped up, that's all we have for this week. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.